Mari. Thirty years he's been bringing in worthless samples for assaying. Yeah, you'd think he'd give up. No, not Gus. So, you know, I've got an idea how we can have some fun. With Gus? What do you got in mind? Well, Gus always leaves the samples and heads straight for the saloon, right? Yeah. So why don't we fix it so the assayer hunts Gus to tell him that he's finally made that rich strike? Well, you think the assayer will go along with it? Sure he will. Besides, we haven't played a good old trick on Gus for a long time. It just might work. When he comes out, you follow him over to the saloon. I can't wait till I see the look on the old coot's face. His throat's a little dry, Minnie. I'll be right back. Hey, Gus, how you doing? Oh, howdy, Joe. Horse. Hey, I said give me a whiskey. When'd you get in town, Gus? Oh, Minnie and I just rolled in. Another one. And move a little faster next time. Then when I buy this place, I might decide to keep you on the payroll. <laughs> What'd you do, hit it big, Gus? Yeah, can't never tell. Hey, Gus, how come you ain't stopped by the house to say hello lately? Uh, ain't been out that way for a long time now. What do you mean you haven't been out that way? I saw you by the North Fork a little beaver just the other day. Uh, you, you need glasses, Joe. I don't know who you saw, but it wasn't me. Gus, I, I saw you the day before yesterday. I was up on Sawtooth Ridge, and I saw you down the meadow. You need glasses too, Hoss, because I wasn't there either. I told you I ain't been out that way. Gus! Gus! I got great news. That ore will run $3,400 a ton. You hear, hear that, that, boys? I finally hit it. Right, Bartender, get me a drink. Get everybody a drink. And we all hope it's worth a million dollars to you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, I know some of you people think this is a joke, but if it is, it's on you. Gus's ore is jewelry stuff, the richest I ever saw. Rich! I'm rich! Where'd you find it, Gus? What are you saying, Slim? You heard me. I never saw a richer gold lord in my whole life. Where's the strike? Hey, Richard, you know about that? Come on, Where'd you find it, Gus? Where's the strike? I ain't coming. I ain't coming. I ain't coming. Where'd you find it, Gus? Where's the strike? I ain't coming. 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 I ain't Let's get it here. Come on, boys. Everybody up the bar. Come on. Drink some on. Come on. Drink some on. The sun.
many people you figure heard you tell Gus you'd seen him on the Ponderosa? Everybody in the saloon, I reckon, Paul. <laughs> now, when the horses fall, I shot my mouth off, too. Oh, it isn't anybody's fault. Everybody will hear about it sooner or later. San Francisco is probably buzzing with the news right now. Paul, you don't, you don't suppose old Gus really struck gold on the Ponderosa, do you? No, I do not. Never found any gold on this ranch. Virginia City, the other side of the city, not this side. I just suppose he did make a strike on our property. What will we do, mine it? The only way you can make any real money in mining gold is by going into it in a big way. You bring in monitors, bring in hydraulics, wash down the mountains, get rid of all the trees, sink shafts until you eat all the gold there is out of the ground, and maybe you've made a lot of money, but you've also ruined a ranch called the Ponderosa. I happen to like the Ponderosa the way it is. When it comes to that, so do we. Because Gus didn't uh, file any claim, did he? No, and the fact he didn't file a claim is going to make a lot of people think his strike was on somebody else's land, namely ours. Exactly. That's what keeps worrying me. Once people get the gold fever, they lose all respect for other people's property rights. If they think that gold is found at the Ponderosa, they'll overrun this place like ants. I think we'd better get in the town and talk to Gus and just put a stop to all this talk about gold being found at the Ponderosa. The whole thing's ridiculous. The way they're telling it around town, Jim Slade, the assayer, came in. He said Gus's samples were jewelry stuff. Yes, the richest gold ore he'd ever seen. Thank you, Perkins, that's all. I got here as soon as I could, but I see you already know about it. Do you think I got where I am by depending entirely on you for my information? No, sir, I'm, I'm sure you didn't. That's the first time you've been right in six months. The assay report, did you get the details? Yes, sir, the yield is 3,400 a ton. Nuggets, dust, or quartz? Gold-bearing quartz, sir. Very good. If it were nuggets or dust, it could be just a little pocket worth only a few thousands. But if the samples are gold-bearing quartz, old Gus could have found himself a whole mountain of it, worth millions. Rumor has the strike on the Cartwright property, the Ponderosa. If it is, it won't do us any good. Oh, stop acting like a woman. But, C.J., if it's on the Cartwright land, it belongs to the Cartwrights. Don't try to think, Henshaw. Now, go get that old prospector and bring him over here. Go on. Yes, sir. Perkins. Sure is good to have you back in my store again there. But I don't, we don't see enough of you around town anymore, either. What's the matter with you? Why don't you come in once in a while, huh? Say, uh, uh Mr., uh, Mr., uh, say, Gus, I never did know your last name. Schultz, I think, near as I can remember. Got a few more things wrote down here that I'm gonna need. Anything you say, Mr. Schultz, you just name it. You feeling all right this morning, Willie? Feel fine, sir. Feel fine. Yourself? Uh, uh, need salt pork, bacon, tea, beans, and uh, here, this shovel here. I certainly can. Getting all this stuff together, you must be figuring to head out towards your mine. That's what you figure, is it? Well, uh, put your money away, sir. Your credit's good anywhere in town. More so in here. Yeah? Well, that's a change. Last time I came in here, you tried to sweep me out with the trash. Oh, now, let's not be like that, Mr. Schultz. You take people too serious. Why, uh, we're all friends around here. That's so. Strange, ain't it? I've been in and around this town for years. Been elbowed away from every bar and eating place. Been the butt of every unkind joke anybody could dream up. Now, all of a sudden, Everybody wants to buy me drinks. Call me friend. Why do you reckon that is? Well, I'm sure people didn't mean you no harm, Gus. That's an easy thing to say if you ain't the one getting laughed at and shoved around. Uh, when are you figuring on going out to the mine, Gus? Well, now, what's that to you? Unless you're figuring on following me to find out where it is. We ain't, Gus. But you know there's a lot of people in this town just waiting to try it. Now, what you need is a bodyguard. Oh, you applying for the job? We figure we might keep you out of any trouble you might get in. In return for knowing where the mine is, I guess. Or a thousand a month, maybe. <laughs> no, thank you. Willie, I'll need one of them there picks. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I guess holding the mine ain't as easy as it sounds, eh, Gus? Takes a lot of sweat. Costs a lot of money to work it right. Well, I didn't find that mine by sitting in the shade and whittling. Need special equipment to get the gold out of there, won't you? Of Course I will. Think I'm gonna dig it out with my teeth? Thousand dollars will go a long ways towards buying that equipment, won't it? Long way. 
What you getting at, Willie? Well, I'm a plain speaking man, Gus. I reckon a thousand dollars would buy a good interest in that mine of yours. Maybe twenty uh, percent. Like maybe half of one percent. Oh, come on now, Gus. I'm making you a serious uh -huh, offer. Uh, and I'm making you one too. Now, what do I owe you? No, no. Uh, I'll just put it on your bill. Well, service is looking up around here. Maybe I'll call back again. Oh, I'll pick up all this stuff later. Oh, it'll be ready, Mr. Schultz. It'll be ready. Gus! Oh, Gus! Whoa. There you are, Gus. Mr. Schultz! Mr. Schultz? Uh, Mr. Schultz, I've been looking all over for you. Mr. Shasta would like to talk to you. You hear that, Willie? Mr. Shasta's a big, important man. Owns maybe a dozen of the richest mines in these parts. Big house, servants, fine horses. The way I hear it, he's got money he ain't even counted yet. <laughs> maybe you'd like to raise your offer and bid against Mr. Shasta. Mm. Nobody can do that. When does he want to see me? Uh, now, if it's convenient, uh, Mr. Schultz. Right now, I'll be just fine. Come on, Minnie. We're going to go calling on Mr. Shasta. We're ready. <laughs> Will this be satisfactory, sir? Not for me. <laughs> but uh, should impress a man who's been used to a steady diet of sow belly and jackrabbit stew. <laughs> yes. Get that ready, please. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Uh -huh. Oh. Mr. Schultz, this is Mr. Shasta. Howdy, Mr. Shasta. Mr. Schultz, good of you to come and see me. I was just about to have a little snack here. Care to join me? Oh, sure. Here, let me help you. See anything else here no, you like? them there. That's All good. right. Yeah. Now, would you care for a drink? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. You prefer brandy, uh, bourbon, or champagne? Well, whatever you're yeah. having. No, no, you name it. Well, I've seen champagne in them little buckets a few times, but I, I never tasted it. All right, then champagne it is. None finer anywhere. Tastes pretty, but don't have much jolt to it. No, it doesn't. Here, let me pour something else for you here. Napoleon brandy. I'm sure this will be much more to your taste. There, try that. That's good drinking liquor. Yeah, yeah. have some more. Oh, thank you. That's fine. That's fine. Let's sit down and have a little chat. All right, don't mind if I do. <clears throat> oh, here. Over here in my chair. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Mr. Schultz, be comfortable. Yeah. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Schultz. Yeah, I guess I am at that, but I wish you'd call me Gus. Every time you say Mr. Schultz, I think you're talking to my father. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Gus. Gus, it's a known fact that you've made a very rich gold strike. Now, you've been a miner long enough to know that it takes a lot of time, effort, and money to get that gold out of the ground in commercial quantities. Been thinking about that. It's not a job for one man, or two, or even ten. It's a job calling for manpower, machinery, and know-how. Well, I wasn't figuring on doing it all by myself. Pretty good grub you got here. Well, thank you, Gus. I guess I operate a number of mines, big ones. I can set up an organization to handle your claim. Bring in men, machines, drill shafts, build a stamping mill, why, I can process more ore in one week than you could in a whole year. Cost a parcel of money, wouldn't it? The money's no problem, Gus. I'm offering you a partnership in Shasta and Company. Here, $5,000. Earnest money. Show you my good faith. Come on, take it, Gus. It's yours. You, you ain't giving this to me, are you? It's an advance against your share of the profits. All you have to do is sign a simple agreement. Mr. Henshaw, I'll show you where. You just sign right here. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Shasta. Just sign, sit back. Without doing anything else, you collect 25% of all the gold we take out of your claim. Just sitting there, Gus. You're a wealthy man. You like this home? Oh, yeah. Never been in a home like this before. In six months, you can have one just like it. 
You won't have to work another day of your life. Well, I, I, I got to think about it. Gus, I'm offering you a fortune. There's not another company in the country would make you a deal as good as this. But I, I can't sign no agreement. I'll, I'll make it $10,000. No, 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 here. I, I got to go. I got some things to take care of. Just a minute. Gus, I, I wish you'd make me a promise. That you'll give me a chance to meet, or better, any offer that might come your way. Oh, sure, sure, Mr. Shasta. And, and thanks for the grub and uh, the liquor and... Uh... Well, that's all right, Gus. I'm sure we can work out something. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's dealing with somebody else. No, Aunt John. Well, why did he turn you down? was any plainer, it'd bite you right on the nose. He didn't want to turn me down. He wanted that money so bad, he was drooling. But he couldn't make a deal because he doesn't own the claim. Now it's obvious that the strike is on the Ponderosa. Well, that's the rumor, Madawa. The rumor has become fact. Now I know what I have to do. <laughs> As Gus makes his move, they'll pile in on him. Talk to him. So when I found the strike, I says to Minnie, Minnie, you're gonna have the best oats there is the rest of your life. Oh, Mr. Gus. Well, congratulations. I hear you find yourself a gold mine. Well, I uh, I've been lucky at last. You sure have. Uh, would you like to join us for a moment? A little bit of conversation? Don't take a minute. Excuse us, boys. Come on over, Gus. Sure, Mr. Cargo. Hey, sit yourself down. Howdy, Gus. Howdy, Joe. Hoss. Gus, you, uh, you sure stirred up a fuss in this town. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Where'd you find it? Well, you, you got no right to ask a man where he found gold, Mr. Cartwright. It ain't nobody's business where my strike's at. Absolutely right, Gus. Of course, it isn't any of my business, except if it's on the Ponderosa, it is my business. Well, I never said the strike was on your place. Yeah, but Gus, you didn't say it wasn't, either. Gus? Gus, how about you making a, a little sort of public announcement to the effect that it isn't on the Ponderosa? No, no, I ain't making no public announcement about nothing. Now, Gus, and nobody gonna... can make me, either. Of course, now, I'm look, gonna... start telling folks where it ain't. And before long, everybody's going to know right where it's at. You're not going to lose anything. You're not going to lose anything. Sure didn't help very much, did it? Let's get on home before somebody stakes a claim in our living room. Sure got them coming. Mm. Like we got company coming, Minnie. Afternoon, Gus. Nice day for a ride. <laughs> You're a shrewd one, Gus. I know now I underestimated your ability as a businessman. But I'm ready to talk now. I don't reckon we got anything to talk about, Mr. Shasta. I'm going to sweeten the pot, Gus. 15,000 in cash and a 30% share of all the gold we take out of your mine. Now, that applies no matter where your strike is. All you have to do is show it to me, and I'll take care of the rest of it. 
Here you are. 15,000 cash. I'm sure sorry. I just can't do it. Is that your last word? Yeah, that's it. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Gus. Extremely sorry. <laughs> Gentlemen, our friend Mr. Schultz needs a little persuading. Yes, sir, Minnie, you're going to have a good life. A lot of votes, Minnie. Yes, sir. Mm, Minnie. You're going to have a good life. Ain't, uh, ain't you fellas kind of long way from town? You should have told Mr. Shasta what he wanted to know, Gus. Been a lot easier on you. And like I told you, you should have hired a couple of bodyguards. Because now you're going to need them. <laughs> what do you mean he didn't tell you where his strike is? sent out there to get information for me. Now, why didn't you? Well, he kind of collapsed before he got to that, sir. If you'd let us handle it our way, we could have got your information. If I'd let you handle it your way, the man would be dead by now. I never would get the information. We did the best we could, Mr. Shasta. And we did like you said. We never even touched his face. Now, do we get our money? This money is for keeping your mouth shut. Now, get out of here. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Strangers everywhere, and more coming every hour. The hotels are full. The only two words you hear on the street are gold and ponderosa. Ponderosa? Well, ponderosa is very big. A man could waste a whole lifetime searching unless he knew just where to look. <laughs> the rainbow chasers know this, so they stay in Virginia City waiting for Gus to stake his claim. Yes, sir, but when he does stake his claim, then the rush will start. And the Cartwrights will move in to protect their property. You worry too much. In a situation like this, if a man doesn't fight the inevitable, he makes it work for him. Henshaw, if you owned a ranch as lovely as the Ponderosa, and you saw complete destruction coming, wouldn't you be willing to talk terms with a man who could do something about it? Well, wouldn't you? Yes, sir, I, I certainly would. And so will Ben Cartwright. <laughs> Chester. Mr. Cartwright. Come in. Yeah. Come in. Thank you. Uh, you know Mr. Henshaw? Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Of course. May I have your hat? Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Thank Won't you. Come this way, please. It's quite a while since I've been out here. Yes, it has been quite a, a long while. Long ride. I might add a very dusty one, too. <laughs> Last time I was here, I seem to recall you're pouring me a glass of excellent brandy that did cut the dust from the throat. Well, let me refresh your taste. <laughs> Thank you. Just a drop. I still think this is the most beautiful ranch house I've ever seen. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Lots of excitement in town. People pouring in from everywhere. So I understand. In fact, I guess the, uh, the 
merchants are doing a landslide business. Well, they wish they did that kind of business every day. <laughs> well, good luck and good health. Thank you. you. Mm. Excellent brandy. Even better than I remember. Yes, indeed. Very fine. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Uh, thank you. It's been a long ride. I'll stand. All right. Are you aware that you are sitting on a powder cake? Oh, really? What are you getting at? You're a rancher. You deal in cattle, lumber, and land. Now, gold has been discovered on the Ponderosa. Now, hold on just a moment there. There has been the report of a gold strike, but uh, no proof that it was on the Ponderosa. Well, I have reason to believe that it is. And wherever gold is discovered, trouble usually follows. Well, even if it were, this is a private ranch. It's closed to prospecting. Nobody can or ever will stake a claim on this property. It's a commendable attitude. A man should protect what's his own. But I'm a mining man. I've seen this happen before. And regardless of whether it's a private ranch or whether it's illegal to stake a claim on it, people will pour in by the thousands. They will trample you right into the dirt. You're in serious trouble, Cartwright. <clears throat> well, if I'm in that kind of trouble, I guess I should... Get the law into this. I guess I could uh, apply to the army for troop support. Well, it depends on how soon they get here and in what numbers. And besides, when they do, soldiers would probably desert to hunt gold on their own. It's happened before. Mr. Shasta, I believe you have a plan. Yes, to get there first with the most. You need me, Cartwright. I think we should form a partnership for our mutual profit. Together, we make a deal with Gus Schultz. You give me the exclusive mineral rights to all the land between Sawtooth and Little Beaver. Now, in return, I move in men and the most modern equipment. I do all the work. And we split every dollar of profit evenly. This presupposes, of course, that the gold was discovered on this ranch. What about the, uh, the thousands of prospectors? What about them? Just a temporary nuisance. In the face of a big, well-organized operation, they won't stay long. But they would overrun the place. Probably, just like they did in California. And right here, when the Comstock load was found. If the, if the gold were discovered here, Mr. Chester, how would you go about mining it? By the most efficient method. I see. Would that include uh, the use of uh, hydraulic machinery? Yes, if that's the most efficient method. Isn't that the machinery that you used uh, at the Wentworth Ranch when you took that over by Gold Hill? That's right. Yeah. Yes, that was very efficient. That machinery managed to turn a thousand acres of beautiful prime land into a sea of Mud, boulders, and rocks. Now, gentlemen, I'm afraid I... I don't intend to let you do that to the Ponderosa. Oh, don't be hasty, Cartwright. Well, I've made you what I consider to be a very fair proposition, which you could profit tremendously. And if we work together, I'm sure we can even improve on that. Mm -hmm. How would you go about improving the Ponderosa, though, Mr. Shasta? Won't you turn it into a wasteland? No, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. This is a beautiful ranch. It's the only legacy I have for my sons. I can see you've closed your minds. Well, I can understand your point of view. I need scarcely remind you, though, that I'm not easily discouraged. <laughs> Thank you for the excellent brandy. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. And sure. Gentlemen. Good day. Good day.
I saw Shasta leave. What did he want? Well, Mr. Shasta wants to go into the mining business with us as partners right here in the Ponderosa. Isn't that nice? Joe, you better go find Gus. Bring him out of here now. I wouldn't talk to us before. Well, he has to talk to us now. He's no match for a man like Shasta. Go find him. Hog time, but bring him here. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Nothing we can do, boys, so why don't you just go on about your business? Joe? What's this all about, Roy? Old Gus's mule come into town with Gus draped over her back. Been beat up pretty bad inside. Well, go on, man. Oh, Joe. Gus. Not good. Is there any chance I can talk to him just for a minute? He won't make much sense until tomorrow, Joe. All he keeps mumbling is that he never meant to make the cart rate so much trouble. I told him three months ago that his heart wouldn't stand much more, and his beating just about did him in. Look, I'll go back to the ranch and tell Pa. We'll come in town tomorrow and stay at the hotel. Let us know as soon as he can talk. I will, Joe. Thanks, Doc. Gus, you sure have this town stirred up. Sign up now and get a $50 grub stake. Shasta Mining Company will pay the man who locates Gus Schultz's strike a $5,000 finder's fee. And in addition, in addition, we'll give that man 25% of all profits taken from any mining done there. Now, in the interest of fair play, no one starts the hunt until Mr. Shasta gives the word. That way, everyone has an even chance. How's it going, Henshaw? 212 men so far, Mr. Shasta. We should have 300 before the day's over. Very good. Very good. I'll be at home. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Sign up now and get your $50 grub stake, everybody. Shasta Mining Company will pay the man a $5,000 finder's fee. And in addition, we'll give that man 25% of all profits taken from any mining done there. Sign up now and get a $50 grub stake. All right, sign up, everybody. Here Mr. Grubstake, Shasta Mining Company will give that man 25% of all profits coming from any operation of that man. Sign up now and get a $50 Grubstake. Excuse me, Mr. Henshaw. Where's Mr. Shasta? He's not here, Mr. Cartwright. He's at home. He is, is he? Sign up now and get a $50 Grubstake. Shasta Mining Company will pay the man who locates Gus Schultz's strike a $5,000 fine. Right. Now, you stay at the hotel and wait for word from the doctor. I'm going to see Mr. Shasta in his house. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, sir. I'll have to announce you. It's all right. I think you'll see me. Well, come in, Cartwright. Mr. Shasta, I'd like you to call your men off. Would you care for some brandy? I said I'd like you to call your you men off. You gave me some very fine brandy. Mr. Shasta, when I, visited... I just came from your office where Mr. Henshaw is recruiting prospectors. Yes. I was agreeably surprised. Henshaw tells me we'll have over 300 men by nightfall. What do you think they're going to be doing the prospecting? Between Sawtooth and Little Beaver. Now, any fool with half a braid in his head knows that's Ponderosa country. Now, wait a minute, Cartwright. You can't prove that. I don't have to prove it. Everybody knows it. I've been doing a little research here. This I'm should interest in you. Research. Just tell Step Mr. Henshaw to stop recruiting those uh, prospectors. Sawtooth and Little Beaver. That's wild, rough country up there. Yes, it is. Now, these townships are yours. Descriptions and deeds are duly recorded. That's right. Now, on a map, a boundary is a line drawn on paper. 
But on the ground, out there in that tangle of forests and canyons and cliffs, where is the boundary? Right where it's always been, Mr. Shasta. The line runs from the tip of the lake over to Mount Blue. I own everything south of that. So the descriptions say, but where exactly is that line? I just told you, right where it's always been, right there. Now, if that boundary was ever completely surveyed, which I doubt, it was a long time ago. There are no fences out there. Where are the witness trees, the cornerstones? Who can say exactly where the Ponderosa ends and the public lands begin? I can. Now, I take the negative view. You may own part of that land, Cartwright, but not all of it. Mr. Shanser, let's get one thing straight right now. The first man sets foot on any part of that land south of that line, I take you to court. Wait a minute, Cartwright. I expect you to. Mining and litigation go hand in hand. That's been the history of it. Every mine in the Virginia City area has been in litigation ever since the first shovel of earth was turned. It's always been that way. Same thing exists today. I have an excellent legal staff, Cartwright. You're going to have to fight this battle on my terms. Unless, of course, you want to reconsider the offer you turned down when I visited your ranch. <laughs> certainly have a right to expect the law to protect your property, providing, of course, it is your property. And from what you tell me, there could be some doubt about that. Now, Roy, I told you, Shasta's trying to tie the Ponderosa up in litigation while he plunders it. We know that, but the point is that the boundary is not marked. And running prospectors off of what they believe to be public land could lead to an all-out shooting war. Well, how do I stop him from going on that land? Well, we found Bill in the recorder's office. Oh, Bill. Hello, Ben. Glad to see you. Thank you. Oh, listen. I need a job done very quickly. How long do you think it'll take you to survey the north boundary of the Ponderosa? Well, if I can hire a full crew and don't run into bad weather, 50, 60 days. That long? Oh, easy. Well, you better do it. And start work right now. You're hired as of this minute. Right, Ben. 60 days. Well, how do I keep him off the Ponderosa for that length of time? All gossip is gone. Oh, Doc, they're just going to the hotel looking for you. Gus is gone. I know he's gone. Do you know where he went? No. I was called out on emergency, and when I came back, he was gone. Town seems to know it. They know it because I told them. I wanted all the help I could get. His heart's so weak, he could die if I don't get him back into bed. Doc, like those men don't care about Gus. They just want to find out where he staked his claim. Well, all I want is to try and save his life. Well, if he went back where I saw him, he'll be out at Sawtooth by Little Beaver. Now, you boys go after him and find him quick. I'm going to stay in town and see if I can get the army in on this and talk some sense into those gold-hungry buzzards. Stand a better chance if we all split up. We might. Then again, you might know something we don't. Or try to get rid of us and go after that $5,000 finder's fee all for yourself. Not to mention 25% of the mine. Now, look, we've been working together for months. And you think I'd do a thing like that? We work together for small change. This is big money. <laughs> No sign of on the flat. Well, he's a meadow and a little beaver. Too bad old Gus just didn't come right out and tell you that he found gold on the Ponderosa. Yeah, and it would have saved everybody a lot of trouble. I'll tell you what. You two split off and I'll take the matter. All right, if you don't find him, you know where we'll be at. Yo, 
the sheriff hunting old Gus, too. Yeah, Joe saw him prospecting around here. He's got a better idea of where he is than we have. So make things easier for us. Gus? All right, Gus? No, I ain't all right. But I don't care. Look at me. Been nothing all my life. Then, a couple of months ago, Doc says I'm gonna die real soon. I lived like nothing. Now I was gonna die like nothing. I never thought you were nothing, Gus. Bless your heart, boy, I know that. But I wanted more. Just once before I died, I wanted the respect of everybody. People to look up at me. Think I was a man worth knowing. And I made it. Didn't I, little Joe? Yeah, you made it, Gus. I've been a big man since my strike. Everybody talking about old Gus. Buying me drinks. Why, people even start calling me Mr. Schultz. So, this is where your strike is. Yes, sir. You found her. This is where she is, all right. What's the matter? My arm is not dead. I can't feel anything. Hey, a couple of you men help the sheriff get a travoy made. We've got to get him to the doctor. Pike and Fallon had run. Them two beat me bad. Trying to find out where my strike was. And it's here. Right here. Behind that rock yonder. Got to be the biggest joke that ever was. But I was big man, Mr. Schultz. Yeah, you were a big man, Gus. I'm the one who found Gus's strike, not him. Is Fallon with you? I was there first, and I want that money. I'll tell you who gets the money. The man who staked the claim. Now, which one of you is that? Well, we Come on, know. speak up. Oh, oh, you don't. All right, that'll be enough. I think it's about time I had something to say about this. Now, that strike is on Ponderosa country. Nobody stakes a claim, do you understand? Absolutely nobody. Don't listen to him. That is public land out there. I don't know all of you fellas. 
My name's Ben Cartwright. Those of you who do know I'm a man of my word. And my word is that nobody sets foot in the Ponderosa. Nobody! You two are under arrest. Old Gus made a dying statement that you're the ones that beat him up. Shasta paid us to do it. He wanted the gold mine. There's your gold mine, Shasta. All two sacks of it. Gus bought the ore. We found the receipt in his pocket. See, there never was a gold mine. Just a lonely old man who spent his whole life looking for the big strike that never happened. Now, you thought Gus was pretty funny, didn't you? you? Used to laugh at him, make him the butt of all your jokes. But one day the doctor told Gus he was gonna die. But before he went, he wanted that one big moment of glory. Well, Gus got it. And this time, the laugh's on you. Come on, Chester. <laughs> the gold rush was over, gone, like a soap bubble in the sun. The Ponderosa was just as it had always been. And we went home. saw him on the Ponderosa, and we all heard you say that. Let's get out of here. Come on, boys, everybody up the bar. Come on, drink some out. Come on, drink some out. The sun is nice. Fire to my Let's go. Gus always leaves the samples and heads straight for the saloon, right? Yeah. So why don't we fix it so the assayer hunts Gus to tell him that he's finally made that rich strike? You think the assayer will go along with it? Sure he will. Besides, we haven't played a good old trick on Gus for a long time. It just might work. <laughs> when he comes out, you follow him over to the saloon. I can't wait till I see the look on the old coot's face. <laughs> It's a little dry, Minnie. I'll be right back. Mm. A lot of funny 
guys. <laughs> Give me a glass of whiskey. Hey, Gus, how you doing? Oh, howdy, Joe, horse. Hey, I said give me a whiskey. When did you get in town, Gus? Oh, well, Minnie and I just rolled in. Hoss, how many people do you figure heard you tell Gus you'd seen him on the Ponderosa? Everybody in the saloon, I reckon, Paul. <laughs> now, when Hoss is falling, shot my mouth off, too. Oh, it isn't anybody's fault. Everybody will hear about it sooner or later. San Francisco is probably buzzing with the news right now. Paul, you don't, you don't suppose old Gus really struck gold on the Ponderosa, do you? No, I do not. Never found any gold on this ranch. Virginia City, the other side of the city, not this side. I suppose he did make a strike on our property. What will we do, mine it? The only way you can make any real money in mining gold is by going into it in a big way. You bring in monitors, bring in hydraulics, wash down the mountains, get rid of all the trees, sink shafts until you eke all the gold there is out of the ground, and then maybe you've made a lot of money, but you've also ruined a ranch called the Ponderosa. I happen to like the Ponderosa the way it is. When it comes to that, so do we. But Gus didn't uh, file any claim, did he? No, and the fact he didn't file a claim is going to make a lot of people think his strike was on somebody else's land, namely ours. Exactly. That's what keeps worrying me. Once people get the gold fever, they lose all respect for other people's property rights. If they think that gold is found at the... Thirty years, he's been bringing in worthless samples for assaying. Yeah, you'd think he'd give up. No, not Gus. See, you know, I've got an idea how we can have some fun. With Gus? What do you got in mind? Another one. And move a little faster next time. Then when I buy this place, I might decide to keep you on the payroll. <laughs> What'd you do, hit it big, Gus? Yeah, can't never tell. Hey, Gus, how come you ain't stopped by the house to say hello lately? Uh. Ain't been out that way for a long time now. What do you mean you haven't been out that way? I saw you by the North Fork of Little Beaver just the other day. Uh, you, you need glasses, Joe. I don't know who you saw, but it wasn't me. Gus, I, I saw you the day before yesterday. I was up on Sawtooth Ridge, and I saw you down the meadow. You need glasses, too, Hoss, because I wasn't there either. I told you, I ain't been out that way. Gus! Gus! I got great news. That ore will run $3,400 a ton. You hear that, that, boys? I finally hit it. Right, bartender, get me a drink. Get everybody a drink. And we all hope it's worth a million dollars to you, Gus. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now, I know some of you people think this is a joke, but if it is, it's on you. Gus's ore is jewelry stuff, the richest I ever saw. Rich! I'm rich! Rich! <laughs> What are you saying, Slade? You heard me. I never saw a richer gold lord in my whole life. 